in the last stream, we were working on quite a bit of refined storage. We set up the auto crafting back here with these uh, now orange crafters. We got our wireless transmitter up and running with the uh, wireless crafting grid that is now being wirelessly charged in our hotbar, thus allowing us to access our refined storage system anywhere within a 16 block radius of the wireless transmitter. One thing that I didn't set up in the last stream that I very much so do want to set up here is uh, if you go to options and then controls and type in wireless, you can set a hotkey for the wireless crafting grid. By default, it's set to control G. Um, I much prefer having mine set to Z. Uh, now, when this turns orange, by the way, it means another key is already set to Z. Uh, and so if I type in Z and then hit key, we can see that currently it's also set to hotbar swapper. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and get rid of that because I don't use the hotbar swapping feature. But now, if I'm in the world and I press Z, it will automatically open the wireless crafting grid without me having to actually hold it. Like if I'm holding my pencil and I hit Z, it opens it up and I don't have to actually find it, which is super nice and is gonna make getting to the wireless crafting grid just a lot easier when I'm out and about. Now, at the end of the last stream, I did mention that between streams, I was gonna do kind of a whole base redesign. And you may have noticed that this base is looking incredibly similar to the way that it looked at the end of the last stream. And the reason for that is that um, whilst I have started uh, the beginnings of a new base, um, I haven't had quite the time to actually fully flesh it out. And also whilst I was kind of toying around with uh, the design that I was gonna go with, um, it also occurred to me that we do have the RF tools builder in the pack. And this would make my life a whole lot easier because we can use this to build big uh, custom shapes that I then don't have to build manually. And so I think what I would like to work on at the start of today's stream is trying to get to the builder. In order to do that, we are going to finally have to get into the very beginnings of mechanism with the metallurgic infuser, because to make the builder, we need a machine frame. To make a machine frame, we need that steel casing in the metallurgic infuser with gold dust. And of course, to get the metallurgic infuser, we need a steel casing. We do have one steel casing from our initial uh, blood magic setup. Uh, but we are going to need to get another one of these. Thankfully, uh, we do have 867 blocks worth of uh, steel here. And so getting another steel casing should really just be a case of getting, I think it's two buckets worth, five buckets worth even, of, uh, of blood into this blood altar, which again, given that we now have the meat feeder, really shouldn't be too difficult. We just need our sacrificial knife. Drop this in. Give this a few right clicks until we are above 5,000. There we go. And then that should very slowly but surely transform into a steel block. So back over here, for the metallurgic infuser, we need uh, two furnaces, one steel casing, four iron, and two redstone. Once you have the steel casing, it's actually a surprisingly easy recipe. And then from there, as shown just a minute ago, all we have to do is combine the steel casing that we already have with 100 millibuckets of gold in the metallurgic infuser, and we should be good to go. So let's go ahead and grab one gold ingot here. It's quite possible we might need that gold in dust form. Yeah, it doesn't look like you can put ingots directly into the metallurgic infuser. Thankfully, we do have this uh, ore crushing hammer here, and I think if we have a little bit of gold ore pieces, which we totally do, and uh, we should be able to craft those up and then craft those with the crushing hammer to get the gold grit, which we can then put into the metallurgic infuser. So essentially, chat, all we have to do here is down on our power line, which is still getting incredibly messy. Let's put it uh, right about here. We can uh, deal with this uh, person. Goodbye, my friend. And then from there, we can place our gold grit in on the left. That's gonna fill up 10 millibuckets. Okay, so we need 10 pieces of gold grit per machine frame, which is fine. And we put the steel casing in the middle. And so if we quickly hammer down four more gold ore, boom, and it's going, nice. In the future, we can make this uh, faster with the uh, speed upgrades and also uh, more energy efficient as well with the uh, energy upgrades. But for now, our first machine frame is done. And so back over here, what we should be able to do is craft that up with four bricks, one ender pearl, and three redstone dust. 
Uh, right now, we're missing the bricks. Thankfully, between streams, I have been making quite a lot of bricks because I've been making uh, these dark bricks for the dark brick stairs that I'm using in the new base design. And so getting four regular Minecraft bricks, one, two, three, and four, really not going to be too difficult. And boom, we have an RF Tools Builder. So essentially, chat, what we have over here is we have a hexagon, which uh, is, of course, B-themed, made out of dirt. Inside of that hexagon, we then have a circle with some kind of paths coming off uh, that we can use to kind of branch out the base into uh, more platforms, potentially more hexagons as the base gets bigger and bigger. Now, my plan right here is for this to be kind of the center of the base. Uh, the floor, by the way, here is made with uh, dark oak planks. Uh, we did have some dark oak seeds over in the system. These guys right here, you get these from sifting dirt. All I had to do is just one, two, three, four, and shift. You get dark oak trees. I did that a couple of times and uh, placed those down. Now, I am using a kind of crisscross pattern of dark oak planks and vertical dark oak planks to kind of give this floor a little bit more texture. Uh, the way that you make the vertical dark oak planks is by taking regular dark oak planks and just crafting them like that. And then you can place these down like so. And you get this like nice alteration to the default uh, texture there. Now, I think I do want to add a little bit of verticality to this area here. And one of my favorite ways to do that is to kind of add pillars around this kind of inner circle and then top those pillars with a dome. I think that looks pretty nice. And so what I'm thinking, Chen, is that if we take some dark oak logs and if we take this dark oak log here that I've chiseled ahead of time, what we can do is we can turn regular dark oak logs using chisel and bits into these cylindrical dark oak logs that uh, probably shouldn't exist in Minecraft because uh, that is very much a, a circle, but I love it. And so if we quickly grab a, another negative chisel design, what we should be able to do, much like we did with the stone bricks at the end of the last stream, is uh, right-click on this, and then now any dark oak log that we walk up to, we can right-click with this design, and boom, it turns it into a cylinder, which I think is really neat. So my plan is to have these cylinders around the outer edge of this circle. So I'm kind of thinking that we might have them like here, 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 of course, here, 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 and here. And then I might put more potentially in the corners, like maybe here, 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 and here. I'm actually not too sure. But I'm thinking we'll do that, and then we'll build the dome on top of it. And that is where our good old friend, the RF Tools Builder, comes in handy. Because if we place this down, like directly in the middle of our circle, what we can do in here is we can place in a ship card. Now, uh, there is a quest for this. It is right down here. Um, we have not unlocked the quest yet, because apparently... Oh, I need to click that first. Okay, that's unfortunate, because it means I'm going to have to make another machine frame before we unlock this quest line. But uh, essentially, over here is the ship card. And if we grab a shape card, which I don't think is too difficult for us to make, it is four paper, two more bricks, two redstone, and one iron. The only thing we're missing there, again, is the bricks, which, again, we do have. Boom. Once you have this, what you can do is you can either right-click it in the world, and it will show up this interface. Alternatively, you can place it in here, and then click the little question mark, and it will show you the same... GUI, and then in this GUI, there are options. So on the left here, we have box. You can click to top dome, which is what we're gonna use. Uh, there's then bottom dome, sphere, cylinder, capped cylinder, prism, torus, cone, heart, composition, scan, and box again. Uh, and these are pretty neat. Uh, even neater is that if we go 23, uh, 23, I think I went with 16, maybe 17, and 10, I think those are the numbers I want. Uh, if we then click this little button here, the uh, support slash preview mode, boom, it will show us, and that's definitely too low down, uh, but it will show us the shape that we have created. So right now we have a giant cube in the sky uh, that is 23 wide, 23 tall, and five above where we're at. Um, I didn't know that mobs could spawn in there. That was not intentional. <laughs> Let me quickly uh, sleep over here, so hopefully they will uh, burn. Uh, also, the reason, by the way, that I sleep so fast is uh, the sleep charm we have here. And not only does it prevent the phantoms from...
spawning and attacking us, but it also allows us uh, to sleep basically instantly, which is uh, super nice. Uh, chat is telling me that I have uh, unevenly placed my pillars, which is incredibly true. This one is uh, not in the right place. Now, of course, we're not looking for a cube. We're looking for a dome. So let's swap that to top dome and let's try that again. Uh, now, that is much higher up. I think that might be a bit too high, potentially. It does appear that it spawns mobs so fast. What in the world? We had so much trouble before trying to get mobs to spawn. Uh, but as soon as you do that, they spawn in instantly. That's actually not a bad mob spawner. Like, if you could automate the clicking and unclicking of this button, like above a, a spike trap, you could set up a pretty decent mob spawner. Unfortunately, I don't think that's doable. Look at this. There are so many of them. I think these guys might actually just kind of push themselves off the edge. Either way, you get the point there. Um, I don't want to do that too many times because apparently mobs will just spawn indefinitely. Uh, there are some really cool shapes. If I make this just like crazy big here, if we do like 50, uh, 50 and 25, uh, and we do something like the Taurus, I think this looks really cool. Um, I'd love to incorporate this uh, into the base. Oh, that's not correct. Hold on. If we make this like 50 and 15, or maybe like 50 and 10, you get this like really cool donut shape that I think it could be neat to try and use in some way, shape, or form. It doesn't really matter if mobs spawn in here. They should just fall uh, into the void, but I'd love to try and do this. Uh, the really cool thing, though, of course, and the reason why the builder is called the builder is that this can build the ship. Now, in order for the builder to work, we need to do two things. One, we need to give it some power which shouldn't be too difficult to do. Uh, we can get ourselves another flux point and just whack that down, uh, hopefully directly onto the builder itself, and that should provide power uh, right away. I do think that we're not going to be producing enough power to run the builder at full speed, but I think that's fine. It just means the builder is going to be a little bit slower than it possibly could be. And given that we're not building a giant structure, uh, that really should be fine. It's only going to take, I think, um, a couple of seconds, if not like a minute or so at most. So well, let's grab that. And we also need to get a chest or some kind of storage device that we can place above the builder. And we place the material we want to build the dome out of into that chest and the builder will build. So let's do this. Let's connect to the Gaming on Caffeine network. Like so. That's going to then start to fill this guy up with power very quickly. And I think, chat, that I'm going to go with marble bricks. These ones are right here from Astral Sorcery as our building block for this top dome. So over here, we're going to fill this up with marble bricks. It does tell us in here how many we need. Uh, we need 866 in total, so maybe like 12 stacks of marble bricks, which we're not quite at just yet. I'll get a few extra just in case. We've got thousands of marble, so it's not going to be a huge problem. There we go. Uh, let me just quickly visualize that once again. Uh, that looks to be correct. I'm going to unvisualize it nice and quick so any mobs don't spawn in there. Uh, we do want to make sure it is set to hollow, which it is. And then if we now um, either give it a redstone signal or toggle the redstone mode to ignored, it should maybe begin building maybe it does need a, a lever look at that so this is going to build it with a floor in which is not what i want but uh, we can once the builder is done which it is now done and uh, we can begin taking that uh, that floor out so what i'll probably do is just kind of run along the edges and then vein mine out the center uh, but the general plan here is to have these dark oak pillars of course running all the way up like so use the negative chisel design to remove the uh, the harsh edges from and look at that occasionally that will mess up <laughs> due to the way uh, that i've made this pillar uh, let me get rid of that and give that another try uh, you the, the best way to avoid that happening is to try and make sure you're facing the same direction every time that you use the the chisel or the uh, the negative pattern so that's the plan for these pillars here and uh, that's the plan for the dome i think this is fine it looks a little low by, right now but as soon as we take out the floor here there's actually quite a bit of vertical space above that and yeah i think it's gonna look pretty cool once we get all of this set up correctly so not too long later and we've cleared out the bottom of the dome i've also made a, a bit of a hole in the roof there just to let some light in we'll probably put uh, a bit of glass there in the future to uh kind of fill that in the next thing i'd like to do is uh, turn this dirt here into grass 
Up until now, we've been sifting regular dirt to find grass seeds and then using those. However, people in the Twitch chat did point out that we can take this grass that we now do have 2048 of, by the way. And if we drop this into our mana pool, we get pasture seeds. And the pasture seeds can be used if you just right click on grass to produce grass. And it spreads quite quickly as well, which is pretty nice. I think it will stop. Yeah, it stopped there, but obviously eventually uh, that will spread out. Now, Britannia does add some pretty nifty alternative pasture seeds as well. And I'm actually not too sure which one I want to go with because I kind of like the look of the golden pasture seed. Uh, let me quickly get a few more of these over here. The, uh, the golden pasture seed adds like this kind of orangey golden grass, which I think does kind of fit with the whole uh, honey theme that we have going on. And uh, we are going to have to get our very first piece of, uh, of wheat if we're going to make this work. But uh, thankfully, we do have a good amount of bone meal ready to go here. And if we needed to, we could also grow uh, more wheat in uh, one of our botany pots. But for now, if we just do something like this, we can take this uh, golden pasture seed and do the exact same thing here where we just right click and we get this uh, this golden grass, which does kind of have that same kind of honey color that uh, that our bees produce. So I'm not actually quite sure, chat. Let me know what you think. Do we uh, do we go with the golden grass, mix it up, or do we just go with the, the regular grass? There's also, actually, there's vivid grass as well, this stuff right here. Uh, we need some green dye to make that happen. Uh, I wonder if we can use Batania. We can't. It does have to be actual green dye. Uh, which you can make from the RGB honeycomb, which we've actually yet to set up. Um, I think we should definitely look at getting the uh, the RGB set up sooner rather than later. Uh, however, for now, we can smelt cactus to make it work. And I think we should have, yeah, cactus seed ready to go. So if we just do this and then smelt that up, we should get some green dye fairly quickly. Boom. And boom. So this is uh, basically, I think, a darker green. Yeah, so it gives like that darker green color there for the vivid grass. I'll leave these as they are for now, and I'll let the YouTube comments uh, chime in as well what they think, and we'll uh, we'll come back and we'll you know alter this to give uh, one color for everything. And there's also like scorched uh, grass, which is like very red, and there's a uh, infused pasture seeds, which like adds uh, a blue grass. I think if I type in grass here, uh, yeah, you can see them all along this line. So there's a bunch of different ones from Britannia. I think they all look pretty cool. But yeah, so that's how we're going to spread out the grass and fill in this area uh, going forward, which is pretty nice. One thing that I have learned in this stream, actually, Twitch chat has pointed out that uh, we can get rid of bedrock using ancient spores. This is something that I was not aware of until mere moments ago. But down here, you'll see that we have one mycelium where one of our bedrock used to be. And given that we're going to move basically everything around here, and we don't really need this bedrock anymore, what we can do is we can right click the ancient spores on the bedrock and it turns that bedrock into mycelium that you can then just pick up as you would any other kind of mycelium and completely delete the bedrock, which is crazy. People are pointing out that we would need bedrock for flux. However, there is a second page here. Um, and if you get a flux block, which does require flux, but once we have flux and we make a flux block, we can then use that flux block to make more flux, thus not requiring any obsidian. Um, so I think I might leave one piece of bedrock here potentially, I'm not too sure, but uh, as we go and you know move all the base over, uh, we can get rid of that if we want to. And I don't really think we're going to need the obsidian much going forward anyway. So uh, that is an option there if we uh, if we want to follow that through. For now though, the next thing I want to, uh, to talk about are these framed compacting drawers here. So up until now, we've been making, uh, we've been making all of our drawers out of oak wood. But if we're going to go with a new kind of base design, you know, with the uh, the dark bricks, the marble, uh, the dark oak planks, I think we want to mix it up and change the way that our storage drawers look. And up until now, in previous versions of modded Minecraft, the way that this was done was through a table. There was like a table added by storage drawers that allows you to customize framed drawers. Unfortunately, that hasn't been ported over to storage drawers 1.16. You'll see there's no table in here. However... There is an add-on mod called Framed Compacting Drawers that has been made and has been added that allows us to kind of do the same thing, albeit in a slightly jankier way. So to make a framed drawer, it is six sticks and one regular chest. Of course, all of our sticks are currently gone because we're using them to actively make honey blocks that we set up in the last stream. But uh, if we quickly craft some up here, we can make the framed drawer, which by itself 
looks pretty terrible. However, if we go ahead and uh, break this, what we can do is we can customize this in the crafting grid. So if we place this in the bottom right hand slot, and let's say we grab some marble here, uh, we could place marble in these slots, and you'll see that we get a drawer that looks like it is completely made out of marble and still works in exactly the same way that a regular storage uh, drawer would work, which is pretty neat. Uh, we can even take this one step further. We pick this back up, and uh, you can recolor these, by the way. Uh, we can swap out these two right here for different blocks. So let's say, for example, uh, we wanted to use a little bit of dark oak, maybe like here, we can get a dark oak trim. Let's say that, for example, we wanted maybe dark bricks, uh, maybe like this. I actually kind of like this design. Like that, that gives us like a, a dark brick outer edge with like a dark oak frame and then the marble on the front. I think I might even take it one step further and maybe replace the uh, the dark oak with another block that I do want to do some work with uh, and that is skystone bricks. These guys right here. So if we're gonna make skystone bricks and uh, we first have to get skystone blocks, we can make skystone blocks by smelting skystone and we get skystone by putting skystone dust into a barrel with lava. So I'm kind of thinking uh, if we grab some of our skystone dust, which we do have a fair bit of over in here, what we should be able to do is over down here, if we just right click on here, we should be able to get quite a few. And if we right click very quickly, given that we have so much lava, we can just continually right click. And boom, we get a stack of, of skystone blocks nice and quickly. Uh, from there, we can, of course, distribute those across our three furnaces. And I'm kind of thinking of taking the uh, the skystone bricks here. I want to use them as the edge for our frame doors. And I also want to use them over in the base design a little bit. I'm kind of thinking I might maybe replace this uh, bottom layer, like this layer here of marble with skystone bricks, just to add a little bit of... Uh, contrast, I guess, to the dome here and make it look a little bit different. We can always uh, tinker around with it. Let's have a look. So making actual skystone bricks is just a craft. And then I kind of like the look of these uh, small skystone bricks, which is just another craft of the same block here. I think these look pretty nice. And so if we do the exact same thing here, we pick this back up and we go to craft it. Unfortunately, I think each time we do this, we do have to put all three blocks in again. So I did waste a little bit or a couple of blocks uh, the first time around. Uh, and also, are we out of dark bricks again? Oh, no, we're not. But I think if we do something like this, I kind of like this draw. And I'm thinking that going forward, when we move over our storage drawers to the new island, I might look at moving away from this kind of oak draw setup that we have into a setup that looks a little bit like this, with a few of these down. We can't change the compacting drawers, unfortunately. At least I don't think that we can. Oh no, never mind, we totally can. There's a framed compacting drawer. Um, I think that's actually a one-up on the uh, previous versions of the of like customizing blocks and storage drawers. Because I don't think you used to be able to uh, to configure the compacting drawer, but the fact that you can is pretty nifty uh, and should allow us to make basically the same setup with, uh, with the compacting drawer. You just have to have an actual compacting drawer ahead of time to make it work. Do one of those and then do the same thing with marble. Uh, let's craft that sky stone a couple of times here. And then again with the uh, the dark brick. Like that. Yeah, okay, cool. I can get down with that, actually. Apparently, there are frame draw controllers as well. Wow, yeah, you can totally actually configure the draw controller. That is super cool. That's definitely something you couldn't do previously. So I guess going forward, we can really have everything kind of match um, whatever aesthetic it is that we choose to go with um, for that system over there. So that's the plan going forward between streams. I'll do a lot of moving, by the way, between streams. Um, I think over here, I'm probably going to add like another layer beneath this. Like I want to have like a second floor uh, that's circular just below that. And then I'm also thinking that what I'll probably do is have uh, some stairs kind of coming off this going down. Also, let me quickly uh, deal with this guy over here. But I think we'll have some stairs kind of coming off here, going down, and then connecting up to another uh, hexagon that's on a lower level. Um, I like to add, you know, a little bit of uh, verticality to the base. I don't want it to be completely flat. So I'll probably add some stairs going down, add like another hexagon here, maybe for like blood magic. Uh, we might have like uh, some stairs going up maybe over here 
to another hexagon that adds uh, that's for astral sorcery and then you know maybe like another hexagon that goes down again or up again uh, for bees and you know i'll make sure it's symmetrical of course if we go up here and up here we can go down here and maybe down here uh, and we'll try and make it look you know decent we can maybe have like another level below those as well you know try and really add some depth uh, to the base but uh i kind of plan on doing that i will probably also end up moving uh, this spawner as well like directly under the center of this pillar it's gonna take a little bit of time to move but it shouldn't be too difficult uh, either way uh, and we'll try and get a nice uh, somewhat sprawling but also a somewhat vertical base as well uh, the grasses are spreading nicely which is very nice indeed uh, the last thing though that i want to do chat before we wrap up for today is i would like to look and see if we can't upgrade to the elite centrifuge uh, we do now have netherite being made by our netherite bee and currently we have 472 netherite in total we are also by the way very close to being able to make a tier 4 apiary the only thing holding us back is honey we have 837 blocks of honey and uh, we're just missing 179 uh, the reason by the way that it's kept going is because slowly but surely uh, this guy has been producing sticks for us so we have been slowly making them but of course this guy is very slow and doesn't always produce sticks every time so uh, it's taking a very long time to get there in the next stream once we have like the new base kind of you know standing on its own and, and up and running we can look at making a tree farm and actually uh, speeding up the rate at which we're producing honey blocks and thus hopefully getting some of those higher tier apiaries um, and at that point we're definitely going to need the elite centrifuge so uh, to make this much like with the initial multi-block we're going to need i think 36 elite centrifuge casing and then one elite centrifuge controller so to make these we need centrifuge casing from the previous tier uh, four netherite Four redstone dust, and that's basically it, actually. The controller does require uh, the old controller, some ender pearls, two eyes of ender, and uh, some blocks of netherite, but that really seems very doable. So I will go and tear this one down. So it should just be as simple, really, once we have the centrifuge casing, uh, of just crafting that up. Hopefully we have enough netherite for this. I think we should. We do. Perfect. And then from there, we almost have everything we need for this. We just need four blocks of netherite and the controller and boom we have everything that we need for the elite centrifuge ah okay so unfortunately one controller uh, one casing was used in the controller making so we do need to make one more casing here which shouldn't be too difficult uh, do we have what it takes to make another casing we should do i actually completely forgot about the uh, the energizing orb we've not used it in quite some time but we can once again drop that guy in right about there we do still have our uh, energizing rods and so hopefully fairly quickly here we're going to get another centrifuge casing and then at that point of course uh, we can fill that in uh, but as i was saying i think it's basically the same as the previous tier of centrifuge but uh, just faster and i believe it could do five honeycombs at a time boom and boom look at that so this can actually do six honeycombs at once it's not receiving power. Let me just try breaking and replacing the cable at the bottom here. There we go. Okay, so we should see, hopefully, these combs being processed nice and quickly. Look at that. Beautiful. Now, I believe that we can even take that one step further. And do we have a crafting session? We do. If we craft that into blocks here... We can, of course, begin processing uh, entire blocks at a time, which is a little slower, but still definitely faster than it would take for nine of these. And, of course, that's important because going forward, once we get uh, the higher tiers of apiary, the tier three and the tier four, the bees are actually going to produce blocks of comb as opposed to individual comb. Uh, so, again, each time, you know, an ender bee goes to a tier four apiary, it produces eight honeycomb blocks, which is equivalent of 56. Is that right? Yeah, that's the equivalent of 56 regular endercombs that's a crazy increase in the amount of resources that we're generating which right now might seem like extreme overkill because we've already got so much like are so many resources that we don't need you know we've got uh, twenty thousand nether stars but uh for some resources specifically the ones that we need for the creative items we're going to need tens of thousands if not hundreds of thousands of uh, like diamonds emeralds iron uh, gold especially the things required to make storage drawers and ultimate singularities so that's definitely kind of planning for the future a bit there uh, but hopefully this uh, elite centrifuge should be good enough to handle it. Um, but one, at least the setup that we have now, once we upgrade to tier four apiaries, it might well be the case that we have to set up multiple uh, elite centrifuges to kind of handle uh, all of the stuff that's being generated. We'll find out, I guess, sooner, hopefully, rather than later. 
Real quick, actually, I have been reminded. One other thing I do want to make here is a diamond anvil. This guy from Cyclic. This is actually not too bad to make outside of the crystallized obsidian. We make this in the solidification chamber with obsidian, a crystallized amber, and a wither rose, as well as a slime. So I think it's probably in our best interest if we're going to do this to make a new solidification chamber and a new melting chamber just because our current uh, solidification and melting chamber uh, are being used for automating honey we'll do a very temporary setup here i think we'll just do something like uh this to get down the uh, the melting chamber and the solidification chamber so in the melting chamber we need to take some slime i'm actually not quite sure how much slime let's have a look here we need a thousand millibuckets uh, two slime balls gets you 200 millibuckets and two blocks gets you 1,800. So two blocks is too much, but two uh, balls is too few. Thankfully, we do have the mushrooms ready to go here. And so that should be more than enough if we throw these in like so. We are, of course, going to need to get a fluid cable and once again, do something like this. There we go. And then uh, from here, all we have to do is actually get the crystallized amber, right? That's the one thing that we're missing here in order to make the uh, the diamond anvil, which I will actually bookmark. So we have to keep typing it uh, in over and over again. But yeah, we're just missing the crystallized amber. Uh, we have obsidian and we have a chest full of uh, wither roses over here. So I'll quickly grab those and put them in here. And then for the crystallized amber, if memory serves me right, we need a fire charge. We also need a magma block and a redstone. And we will temporarily interrupt the solidification chamber over here for the uh, the old redstone, magma block, and fire charge. We're not really interrupting too much because, of course, there aren't enough sticks to make this work anyway. But there we go. That should be done. And that's probably been sent into this item pipe, which, again, is one of the reasons why I'm not a huge fan of these item pipes here. But I imagine there's probably a... Uh, yeah, a crystallized amber in there. That's fine. People did point out, actually, that this item router was somewhat unnecessary because we already, and actually extremely unnecessary, we can actually get rid of this entirely. Uh, we were using that to move honey from this drawer to this melting chamber, but because we made the exporter, we can actually just put honey blocks directly into the exporter uh, and they will be sent around directly, which makes it more efficient. We don't have to have a stack of Honey blocks locked inside of our uh, item router. But either way, back over here, we should now be pretty much good to go, right? We throw the uh, crystallized amber in the middle. That instantly makes us a crystallized obsidian. And the idea behind this guy is that we can repair any of our tools using energy. So if we were to, uh, once again, just put this down next to where there's power, for now that's right about here, that will connect up to our flux point and now, if we take something like our Pexel here and we place it in, um, I believe what we might see happen if we change it to always on is it's going to start slowly but surely using our redstone flux to repair the diamond Pexel. Now, I'm not quite sure how much power this is using. It looks like it might be using a fair bit. And as I mentioned before, I think we are going to start uh, fairly soon running out of power. Uh, we could, of course, if we wanted to, just take the current thermo generator that we have and upgrade it to an even higher tier to produce even more uh, redstone flux per tick. However, I'd like to look at some of the other power options in the game. I think it'd be more interesting and, uh, and fun to take a look at some of the other, uh, you know, machines and, and multi-blocks that we can use instead of just upgrading the same thermo generator over and over again. But uh, this is really nifty, and I think we could even use it with things like our uh, diamond chisel to repair that durability and our emerald sword, of course, uh, to repair that durability. And so uh, between streams, I can just leave things in here and they will slowly but surely repair themselves. Uh, people have pointed out that we do now have a decent amount of netherite. And so we could actually kind of retire the uh, diamond pixel in favor of the netherite pixel, which is uh, basically the same thing, but uh, just a little bit better. Now to do that, we do need a smithing table, which thankfully is incredibly easy to make. And I was actually assuming that we need to make like a diamond, uh, sorry, a... Uh, that we'd have to make a netherite pickaxe action shovel, but apparently it's just a diamond pexel with a netherite ingot in here, and boom, we have a netherite pexel. Would you look at that? And we can put it back in, and it's going to continue to charge up its durability there at the cost of power, which is uh, incredibly useful.
But chat, I think that is where I'm going to go ahead and wrap up things for today. Next time, we'll come back. Hopefully, I'll have more of this base over here fleshed out. Uh, we will have, hopefully, a new set of storage drawers looking something like this to hold all of our items. Um, we'll also have maybe some more Skystone uh, around the rim of this uh, dome here. I might make a few changes uh, to the dome and the way things look uh, just to make it look a little nicer and kind of break things up a bit uh, if I think they look a bit samey. But uh, we'll do that. Uh, I might end up getting rid of some of this stuff over here as well as we kind of expand out. And I think next time we'll look at hopefully getting a tree farm up and running and maybe looking at getting a better source of power, uh, especially if we don't have enough power to run the new tree farm. Uh, and then hopefully as well, once we have the tree farm, uh, we should be able to fairly quickly get uh, our first tier four apiary up and running as well. But for now, guys, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up today's stream there. <laughs>